Hey, what's up, everyone? Jigus, welcome back. Uh, it's it's been a while, right? I mean, you, you you come in, you get make the debut, and then you got to sit around for nine months. So what's what's uh, what's it been like for you during this time? Geez, it's been nine months. Oh well, I mean, uh, it flew past. It was uh, it's been amazing. I mean, obviously, going back home after a debut like that, it's been amazing. Uh, it sparked a new fire. I didn't even think there was a, a bigger fire uh, available in me. To be honest, uh, I've always been just wanting to go and go and get better and better. And after that, 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 that first win, I just realized I want to be even better. I want to keep on doing that. That was great. And uh, training has been, been amazing. And obviously, the first fight not happening uh, was a little bit of a bummer. But, you know, the world's weird place right now. And here we are. Uh, bigger card, same opponent. Everything is the same except for it's bigger. Yeah. I was going to ask you if it, if it did, like you said, it was completely out of your control, right? But did you start getting worried or concerned at all? I mean, that's, you know, travel restrictions and all these things. I mean, did you start thinking, dude, am I ever going to get to get back in there? Oh, well, I mean, you guys won't believe it. South Africa, the, um, the COVID's quite a bad, bad right there. Uh, there right now, it's, uh, there's like a third wave that came in. So when uh, I was, I left last week, Wednesday. Uh, I left South Africa uh, to fly in, and the Sunday before that, the president addressed the nation, and he actually locked down the whole country again uh, in a level four lockdown. And we were like, oh, crap. It's just happening again three days before we fly out. And luckily, we had waivers. We had everything. We had our tests ready. We had everything already sorted. The visas were sorted. And, uh, yeah, we got to go because we were uh, considered essential travelers. And here we are. So, you know, when the stars align, they align. And they will align just like that come Saturday night. Nice. Motivation was there for you, as you said. Um, what was what were the training situation? Is it has it been okay? Or have you been having to kind of – do things in backyards or whatever? Or is it in, uh, have you had j access to gyms and such? No, not at all. My gym was open the whole time uh, from the last fight. Uh, we, we went back to uh, almost being completely open again. And then winter started around, I would say, March. March, May, winter started coming and the cases started getting up. And we got a third variant in South Africa. Um, I don't know too much about this virus. I just hear, well, a lot of people's getting it. And, uh, you know, it's actually quite terrible. Like, there's so many people in, in South Africa getting it, and people are dying. It's a much more serious variant, uh, apparently. But our gym stayed open. The gyms were too close for more than 50 people at a time, or for a certain amount of people, a week before I flew out, which means I was already perfect. So me and my coach could still train. We could do pads, and we could still be two, three guys on the mat and, and do what we had to do. So I had a perfect camp. Everything was, was, was great. Um, yeah, the, the timing, everything just worked out perfect. So there was no backyard training for this one. There was no, there was no uh, restrictions. Uh, but when I get back, uh, the show, the show will be <laughs> nice. Um, the opponent, as you said, getting to fight the same opponent, you know, that you were playing for, was that important to you? Like, did you ask, like, hey, can we keep this opponent, or did it matter to you? Yeah, well, uh, when uh, I felt so bad because I had to cancel the fight, and I'm not a guy that that, that pulls out a fight. It then it really happens, and. Uh, I felt so bad for Trevin, firstly, and uh, obviously for myself. Uh, I don't want to put out that image that I pulled out of fights for the UFC, only my second fight. Uh, so that was that was terrible, but you know, it was out of my control. And luckily, the UFC, they actively tried to get that visa sorted quicker as well. And it wasn't denied. It wasn't just not ready in time because of the backlog, because of the COVID. So they, they understood completely, and that's great. And I spoke to my agents, and I told them, listen, and he, that's right after he fought uh, on March. And I looked at it and I was like, he is a great opponent. And now he has another win. Uh, he's, a, he's always such a game fighter. He comes out there and bangs. And I believe we can make one hell of a fight. We can rack up that bonus. Whether he keeps up and we get a fight of the night or a performance of the night, I don't know. I'm not too sure. We'll see. But he's a game opponent and I respect him as a fighter. And I think he will make a great fight. So I told them, if we can... Let's just try and reschedule it whenever you can. And they said, listen, he had a three-round fight. They don't know if he has injuries or what it is, but they'll find out and see otherwise. And I said, well, any opponent's good, but if we can, that'll be awesome because it's a great fight. And they came back to me and said, listen, they want you for July 10th. And I was like, well, that's a corner card. And they were like, yeah, we know. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> Give me whoever you want for July 10th. And the, Trevin was, was, was the guy. So, I mean, 
the, the fighting guys really want us to, to square off and see uh, who gets that victory. That's awesome. Last thing for me, uh, what's, what's the goal here? I mean, you came in and made such a splash in your debut. Do you feel like you got to do something spectacular like that again and, and, and get people's attention again? Or is it just, you know, get in there and get a win? You know, um, I always live like if you start thinking like that, you're going to start doing stupid stuff to try and do something spectacular. And that's not, that's not, that's not me. The way I fight is spectacular. The way uh, uh, I'm lucky like that. Uh, the way that I fight is, 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 a, is a way of fighting, of forcing and of, of putting up a pace going forward. And even when I'm on my back foot, to, to keep the fight going. Uh, 17 fights, uh, two losses, uh, all 15 moments coming by a finish. And I don't see that changing this weekend. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. If it should, if it will, it's not a problem for me. But, um, you know, that, that, that debut was pretty perfect. And, you know, don't be surprised if you see something more spectacular Saturday and uh, or you see the exact same result. I'm, I'm going out there and doing what I do. And if that spectacular finish comes, uh, it will. Drinkers, over here. Hi. After your debut win, uh, we asked you, and you weren't a big fan of Marcus's, uh his makeup and stuff before the fight. You said it was kind of foolish and all that kind of stuff. Trevin is pretty even keeled even before and after the fight. So out, even outside of his skills in the octagon, do you prefer this type of opponent that doesn't bring all of those antics into the fight leading up to it? You know, it's a... Uh I do respect Trevor, and I respect his job. I respect him. He's a family guy. He's a, he's a very nice guy. I mean, he doesn't put a foot wrong, I think. Uh, but at the end of the day, he could be the nicest guy in the world. He could be the biggest asshole in the world. To me, I get in there, I see a blank face. I see somebody in between me and the title. In between me, he's one ladder. He's one step in the ladder that I have to take. So, I mean, to me, the, the persona doesn't matter. To me, the personality doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is getting that win, and you know, uh, yeah, like I said, it's not a, it's not something that bothers me. Even if you are trying to get under my skin, it's not going to bother me. At the end of the day, I'm going to do the same kind of thing to the nicest guy that's going to that I'm going to do to the worst guy. So it's a, uh, it's a tomatoes potato for me. <laughs> and when Trevin was out here earlier, he was very complimentary of your striking, but he said he thinks he saw you pull guillotine maybe once when he was watching your tape. So when you're watch looking at his body of work in the octagon does anything stand out to you in terms of what he does very well in the fights did he say i did a guillotine once he said he he remembers seeing you pull a uh, like pull for a guillotine once in a fight um yeah <laughs> that's all he can remember he uh, okay well that's good because i think i have six wins by guillotine or five i'm not sure but uh um not even my favorite submission to be honest but uh definitely uh you know he's he he has a good he has a good Almost his distance is good. He has a good. He has really good hand speed. And we got, um, when I watch his tape, I'm, I was quite surprised if you look at the way he's built. He's not built like this explosive, muscular guy, but he has he has good hand speed and he has a accuracy, a weird accuracy, an educated left hand, and uh, even his right hand he throws it at the right time. But that's only when he fights at his pace. That's when he fights when he's comfortable, when he's standing and you're waiting and it's waiting and it's a chess match and. Uh, now, I overheard, I saw on one video, he said that in a chess match in stand-up, I won't be able to beat him. That's because this is not a chess match. There's no time. There's no sitting and thinking. You have to do all the stuff you want to do while I'm on me, while I'm putting on the pace, while I'm you know, going full speed. I've had five years of five-rounders only, prepping for five-rounders, title fights. Three rounds is nothing. I'm going to go out there. I can go full speed for three rounds. If you look at him... Um, talking about his strong points, his good hand speed, he's a, he has knockout power, he has, he has submissions, he has ability to get out of tough positions. But if you look at the, his weaknesses, he fought James Krause on 24-hour notice, a guy that's former lightweight, if I'm not mistaken, where he made his debut at light heavy. So he's a much, much bigger guy than James Krause. 24-hour notice, James Krause starts the fight and just gets on him and knows he has to finish this fight in the first because he doesn't have the gas to go to the third. And he gets Draven in trouble early. Draven does not – he didn't get a – he was in big trouble in that first round. But uh, the only reason Kraus couldn't finish him in that first round because he just didn't have the power. He was physically weaker because of the, the size difference. And uh, we saw in that fight the guy with the 24-hour notice fight and the guy with the whole fight camp – in the third round, being equally tired, you can't even decide who is the more tired. 
So you have to ask yourself, the way James Krause did it, he had a smart game plan, but he couldn't keep up with that game plan because he, he had 24 hours. Where for me, I had a whole fight camp. I come from almost 6,000 feet above sea level training. I'm coming down here, I'm going 100% for three rounds. This is your U.S. debut too, correct? This is your first fight in the States? Yeah. So, so how, have, uh, how have you taken it to the fans? Have you run into any fans so far? Yeah, uh, surprisingly so. Uh, I had one guy driving from, is it Phoenix that's close by? He drove all the way from Phoenix to meet me at the hotel uh, before, because I checked in later at the UFC hotel because I had to come in a little bit earlier because of 10 time zones. So I wanted to be here 10 days. Uh, it's a long flight. It's a lot of time zones. So I had to come in a little bit earlier. And uh, we stayed in another hotel, and he was like, and he actually messaged me on Instagram saying, listen, I'm driving all the way through. And I'm like, I don't know where that is, isn't it? No, it's like a three-hour drive. And I was like, wow, that is insane. And he just came to the hotel, wanted to say hello, took a photo. We had a little conversation, and he, and he left. So, I mean, that is insane. That was awesome. And you now uh, I just told him the last time I was in Vegas was uh, 18th of January, 2020, uh, Conor McGregor versus Cowboy Cerrone. And the exact same scenario, same arena, everything sold out uh, in the T-Mobile. And I was in the crowd. Uh, my, uh, I wasn't signed at the UFC then. I was a spectator in the back of the crowd. And that was literally one of the moments I remember saying, I have to do this. I have to, I have to get to this. This is the pinnacle of my life, just watching this fight. And then I had a friend that was in the uh, Marcin Tabura. He's a, and he took me to the UFC PR. And I just looked at everything and I was like, this is everything I've ever wanted in my life. And here I am, a year and a half later, uh, also a Conor McGregor card, uh, first part of the prelims. And, uh, yeah, I mean, soon I'll be the guy on that billboard. Did you fly from South Africa for th to watch that fight? Or were you already in Las Vegas for something? No, no, no. I flew in for, from South Africa to uh, train with Sanford in Florida. Uh, I go train there pretty often. And... Uh, the fight was on. I just saw when I planned my trip to uh, the six weeks trip here to the States that that's in the same time. And I just made sure that I booked everything. I booked my tickets, booked everything, and flew from Florida to Vegas and then back. I might be a little late. How did you get the nickname Still Knox? And can you just explain it? Yeah, so Still Knox is, a, I don't know if it's universal, it's a sleeping tablet. So, um, my K1 career, when I was a K1 fighter, uh, was 33 and 0 with 30 knockouts. And uh, yeah, my brother, when 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 I first find, signed my, my my first EFC fight, in uh, my first professional fight, I was 19 years old, and I was like, well, everybody has these nicknames. I need a nickname. And uh, well, you don't really need one, but and uh, I was living in a house with a few friends, my brother, and he came up with the nickname, and uh, I said, well. That's the best idea. Any take is for a better idea. And he had it, and it stuck. And it, uh, I mean, it turned out to be a pretty cool one. Thank you. Right over here on your left, Um Hi. I was just wondering if you had a prediction for the main event on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Um, geez, it's, uh, it's, it's tough to make a prediction, not because of the way I think about the fight, but just because I, I, I love g both guys. I've met Dustin. I uh, never met Connor. Uh, but always been a massive fan of, of Conor McGregor and uh, the, what he's done for the sport and the way he he carries himself and uh, he's just the way he came in and, and he changed the whole game. We all know that, uh, not in terms of the money, not in terms of, of, of the publicity, that as well, but just his fighting style is something unlike we've ever seen and that's something that inspired me. That inspired me to think I have a lot of stuff that I do that nobody else does that's a bit unconventional and he made it, he justified it for me. It's okay. It's okay to do something completely different. And that's, that's how all heroes and legends are made. So I'm a massive Conor fan, and I do believe that he will have made the necessary changes to, to win this fight. Uh, the, the second fight, Conor was, was doing great. Uh, he did neglect the fact that we have all these tools to our advantage as MMA fighters. If you put an MMA fighter against a boxer in no rules, the MMA fighter is always winning. If you put him against anybody, the MMA fighter is always winning. And he came to a fight where he had all the tools. Connor has great kicks. He has great everything. 
and he only used two of them, and those were the boxing hands, and Dustin Poirier used his whole arsenal, and that's why he lost that fight, I believe, and I think uh, Conor McGregor is coming back a new beast. You can see there's a fire under him, and uh, he, he, he really has a, a fight IQ like none other, so I think uh, he's going to be great, and I, I honestly think he's going to win that fight. And like you mentioned, you're going to be opening up the prelims for this card. Obviously a massive card, a big trilogy. Does all the extra eyes and extra fans going to be watching this fight, does that add any extra pressure for you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just like my, 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 my previous fight, to, to come out here and fighting uh, for South Africa, fighting a short notice fight, fighting a, a big name, a guy ranked almost 40 places above me, that pressure is always great. That's, that's, I, I've realized that's the feeling I chase. The more, the more it scares me, the more I want it. The more, the more it, it becomes overwhelming, the more I want to be great at it. Uh, all those eyes means more people to see how great I am. Thank you. First, first of all, be careful uh, meeting some of those weirdos from Instagram at your hotel. <laughs> That's a little scary. Um, <laughs> just had <a> makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> to, to be honest, I didn't tell him, uh, like, listen, come to my hotel, whatever. He was like, well, listen, I'm in Vegas. Is there a chance I can have a photo? And I was like, yeah, cool. And uh, I'm just kidding, yeah, <laughs> no, no. but I definitely hear yeah, your kids do not do that. Um, the uh, Nevada Athletic Commission today uh, eliminated all penalties for marijuana tests uh, for fighters going forward. Did you have any thoughts on, on that kind of rule change? So I went through this whole camp and they tell us that today. <laughs> no, I'm just joking, mom, dad, just a joke. <laughs> no, uh, oh, well, I mean, I'm happy to see their progress. I'm happy to see uh, that's what it, that's, uh, I mean, I, I believe it's, it's ancient. It's ancient. I think it's something that should be uh, just all across the board, and uh, I'm glad that we, we are moving this, pro this progress in, in, in the processes that's been in you. I feel bad for all the guys that has suffered because of it, but, uh, I mean, that's uh, uh, like in the history of the world. We learn from our mistakes, and we'll learn maybe this small lesson. We can, uh, we can prevent us from making the same kind of mistakes in the future, and I'm just happy to see that, uh, that the progress is taking place.